Hello everybody and welcome to another Imi Zizi conversation for the September edition. My name is Yodisa Chabalala. I am a co-founder and director of Imi Zizi. And I'm not alone today. I'm so excited for this conversation actually because I am surrounded by powerful, powerful women. And I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, starting with someone who's not <laughs> a guest. <laughs> In this conversation, um, <laughs> the co-founder um, of Imi Zizi and mm. Imi Zizi Evolution. Morning. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> I wish I could actually say. Anyways, hi, everybody. I'm Boning Sashia, um, co-founder uh, of Imi Zizi and Evolution. Very excited to be back. Very excited to have you as well. Very honored. <laughs> it's good to have you back. <laughs> Co-hosting with me. I'm not alone today. It's, it's going to be a good conversation. Please grab a cup of coffee and stick around. It's going to be a good one. And I would like to introduce our guest, Ayanda Mzoneki from uh, Liema Consulting. And she is a woman who is not, you know, a stranger to okay. us at Imizizi. Um, Ayanda, if you can please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, thanks Yoli. Thanks Mponeng, what an honor mm -hmm. to be here. Hi everyone, so I'm Ayanda Mzondeki and I'm the founder and MD of Liama Consulting. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So today's topic is the giving entrepreneur, how women are changing the business landscape. Mm. This is the topic that is very close you know, to our hearts. Um, at Inizizi as well as Inizizi Evolution. For those who don't know about Inizizi Evolution, we introduced it um, in previous conversations. Please, last month, we um, detailed a bit about what Inizizi Evolution is about, but it's a venture building company, which is a sister company that we've recently uh, launched. Um, so yeah, uh, please go there and, and check it out. <laughs> Um, and for those who are new to the Imi Zizi conversations, um, Imi Zizi is a people management and consulting company and we are all about people. Um, we are involved in the entire value chain from when you hire an employee up until the employee <laughs> retires. So we assist SMEs as well as large corporates with their people management needs. And people management, for those who don't know, it's human resources. <laughs> we just prefer to call it people management um, uh, in, in, in our world. So today I have women, yes. powerful women, you know, and not just entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs who have a giving heart. And I must say, this is something that I'm finding more and more um, as I engage with other uh, business women it sort of comes naturally, you know, to not only be concerned about your business, but also give back, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. What impact, you know, women have um, in the business uh, landscape. And that's something that's not, you know, um, uh, too strange to this wonderful, wonderful <laughs> women. And as you know, how we start our conversations, we like to get to know our guests just a bit more. I was telling her earlier on that. I tried to dig, <laughs> even though I was not so successful in some of the things I wanted to know. So I ended just, you know, give us a bit of background about, you know, where you're from, your family set up, you know, um, and, and, and where you've been in life before the business. We'll get to the business, but we want to get to know you. Okay, first. Yoli. How much time do you have? Yo, we have an hour <laughs> of the conversation, so... Okay, I'll yeah, try and keep free. it short. I'll okay. try and keep it short. So, uh, I, I was born in the Free State. I was born and bred in the Free State, in a small mining town. I'm a Kasa who was born in the Free State, who's never, well, who didn't go to the Eastern Cape until I was a teenager. Wow. wow. Which, is quite, <laughs> which is quite fascinating. Um, and my parents were working in the mines and always hard workers. I think my entrepreneurial journey started when I was a little child. Actually. Mm. I used to help my dad count money on the table every evening um, when he had taxis. So he'd, oh, wow. the guys would come in, catch the money, I'd steal maybe 10 rands. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I need a soft life. <laughs> so I would pay myself. Yes, I was going to say, you didn't steal. I'd pay myself. I'd pay myself. So I'd pay myself. Um, and, and I always think, 
some of the questions is, have you always known that you will always be an entrepreneur? And I think even then, innately, maybe I knew that I would eventually be an entrepreneur because my dad was an entrepreneur. Mm. And I grew up in that kind of family, which I'm, I'm really, really grateful. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to my 20s, I um, had my daughter at a very young age. Mm. And I was forced to also now be an entrepreneur again. And mm. I started making money in restaurants. And I always feel, feel like waitresses are entrepreneurs, guys. You work hard, you're yeah. working for the tips, and you mm. you pushing targets, so and they're entrepreneurs. So mm. I, I was an entrepreneur at the age of 20 again. Mm. Um, as a waiter, studying part-time towards my degree. And my journey of entrepreneurship started very early. Mm. And I've always loved it. I'm a mother of two. As I said, my daughter is 23 years old now. She's amazing, such an amazing human being. I know, and I've got Natasha, a she's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a 13-year-old boy who's going on 30. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 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 and yes, I, I run Lema Consulting. And Lema Consulting, same business, same client as you. <laughs> um, people, the business of people. We mm. really believe that we are in the business of people, mm. p putting people first, changing lives. Um, and Lema Consulting has been in business for about 13 years now. Um, I think we're going on 13 years. We're teenagers ourselves. Mm. And I'm loving every single moment of this journey. Mm. Besides running Lema Consulting, I'm also an angel investor with Desert Angels. I'm a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm a director in a couple of other companies, mainly empowering women, funding women, um, giving women access to markets mm. and investors. Mm. So that's my life in a What a Sweet. <laughs> my friend, I'm listening. And I mean, it's such a beauty to actually start engaging with women of your caliber. Um, I mean, our topic is talking about how women are changing the landscape. And I feel like one of the things we didn't do well enough when we started is give ourselves the opportunities to actually be in each other's space mm -hmm. and learn together and grow together and actually remove, I mean, as black women, we had a lot of other things that we had to remove mm -hmm. from uh, the prejudice of just being in business, right? Uh, everyone would be like, oh no, look at how you know, white men have been doing it and they're doing it well, they're collaborating well. Um, small things like, you know, they have uh, Saturday events like regularly mm -hmm. with families. Mm -hmm. So the wives, the kids know each other, but they're talking business. Mm -hmm. And that's where their children start learning about business, right. the importance of networking, mm -hmm. right? So there's that which we as women are not uh, privy to because mm. we are the ones in the kitchen, you know, <laughs> making sure that we are preparing yeah. for this event yeah. to happen. So we've had so many steps and then the whole thing that we've always told about, you know, being black and the fact that we don't quite help each other enough. Mm. Being women, pull her down syndrome. Mm. So to actually get to a point where you're sitting, you know, with women of your caliber, and, and, and we're actually collaborating mm -hmm. and, and wanting to see how do we do better. Yeah. I find, I think it's time mm -hmm. um, and oh, I celebrate definitely. the time. Yes, yeah. yeah. And it, it's actually great that you, you, you're saying that. I was, I was thinking about the fact that we actually competitors mm -hmm. in this space, you know, and uh, when we met, we met at one of our clients for the first time, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and we've always heard about you. Yeah, yes. yeah, you know, and it, it's just always so beautiful to meet other women mm. who are open to collaborating mm. because sometimes you get that pushback mm. that no we competitors, yes. you're not even supposed to be sharing information. If I speak to you, then I'm going to give out True. information mm. and how open mm. you were, you know, uh, with your team, because it was not just her. Mm. It was amazing to see the team as well being open to say, oh, you know, um, we'd love to speak to you guys, collaborate a bit more. Mm. Um, let's hear what you guys are doing that, you know, we, we might learn from. And mm -hmm. it's about time to your point. It is. Morning. Um, and on that point, mm -hmm. you know, because we're talking about the giving entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's, what's your take, uh, Ayanda, in terms of um, 
you know, the business landscape, how it's been done before, mm -hmm. some of the things that, you know, uh, we think it's about time that they change, mm -hmm. especially us as women, we're going to be biased, you know, <laughs> when it comes to women, because I just feel that um, it, it's about time we collaborate a bit more. And in any case, we are fixing things of the past, right? Yes. Uh, because for the longest of time, women have not had a table, uh, sorry, a seat at the table, mm. right? And it's about time we start pulling each other mm. and bringing each other along. Yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree. So back to the, the collaborators and yeah. competitors. Someone said to me yesterday, how about you call it co collaborators so competitors that are collaborators oh, wow. so they came up with that <laughs> that's so interesting we'll work around that word make it sound better but um i really feel the only way we can move forward is by collaboration mm. is by working together mm. and going back to asking for help mm. we want to do it alone mm. we think we can do it alone but if we've got a morning and a yoli who knows exactly how to do certain things, why not pick up the phone and say, so how, how do I do this? How do I navigate um, this particular problem I'm having? And I think for me, I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by amazing women mm. from day one of, of starting the business, mm. from my late partner to um, the networks I belong to. Mm. So we connect international, which is, um, brings together women into the room with the corporates in order to do business. So that's a key focus there. Women President's Organization, mm. which is, um, a, I call it my support group. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's women who come into the room once a month mm. and you talk about our problems mm. and not only business problems, mm. but also family, children, personal problems, health mm. problems, and we share ideas and we share solutions. Mm. And in me saying that, I really, really feel we can do more. We can be more open with each other and be vulnerable. Mm. The problem is the vulnerability. The vulnerability. Where you, you said feel, it, so I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Where you feel, oh no, I can't expose yeah. myself. I can't. Mm. But imagine if you could just expose yourself mm. and, and grow. Mm. If it's not a partnership that works, you learn from it and you move on. I think it's, you know? it's, it goes to the learning from it. I think the, the, the fear that we, we've held on for to for so long is that every time I do something wrong, I'll be known for that wrong yes. thing. Instead of being actually realizing you can be known for recovering mm -hmm. from that thing. Yeah, I it's agree. That, and it's part of vulnerability, mm. right? We always spoke no, at least about how um, women also suffer from in the imposter syndrome. Oof. Every day, all day. So exactly, <laughs> with that in mind, you're just like, I have to yeah. come out looking and sounding like I know what, what I'm, I'm talking doing. about. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what I'm doing, right? That is so and true. So, and so that's where the vulnerability comes in. Mm. Because if I'm coming into a room feeling like I need to know what I'm talking about, I don't give space. Yeah to not know mm -hmm. and for you to teach me, mm. you know? Mm. Because even when I then don't do it right, I go home and I judge myself. Mm. I should have done this, I should have done that. And not pick up the phone again mm. yes. and call <laughs> well, to I'm, be like, hey guys. I'm lost. <laughs> where, where does all of this come from, guys? If you think about it, is it, is it, is it how we were raised? Mm. Because we come into the space, because come, come to think of it, even in corporate, um, you know, the imposter syndrome, the fear mm. of uh, failing or being known as a failure in a particular area because you're not a failure as a person, mm. I believe. Mm. If you fail at something, it's just that. Mm. You, know, you just need mm. to learn from it and pick yourself up. But I just hear women speak about this mm. all the time. Mm. And the more we speak to more women, the more we realize that actually this is a trend. You're not alone, but it seems like we're all suffering in silence mm. behind closed doors, mm. right? And we're not coming out, but it shows that there's something in, in the background. Mm. And I think how we, were, how we were raised has a lot to do with it as well. Sure. How we were raised, you know, <laughs> <laughs> how we were raised was a very special way. I mean, we have to, um, I, I, I am now. In hindsight, I'm grateful mm. of the journey. And it's a hindsight thing, right? Yeah. Because if you think about 
I mean, we're from the telephones, guys. Mm -hmm. Do you know we're from that era where there was no hectic technology mm -hmm. and we've moved through so many stages, mm -hmm. I think, as people. And so the women in that space who, who have more, who feel like they have more to give and more to do, that also takes a lot of undoing personally as a human being. Mm -hmm. Because how I was raised and how you were raised and how she was raised is Different. probably not yeah. the same. Yeah. But obviously there are, I get the, the, the similarities yeah. of expectations of a woman, a girl child um, in South Africa and our societies and how that looks like. And, 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 and really, I mean, when I, I told my parents that I'm going to resign, <laughs> just jumping over to business, my mother was like, girl, what are you you are like you have a job. <laughs> How are you now? And at the time I was an ops manager, she was like, what? No, <laughs> this is not happening. This, you know, like you, you're fine. You're happy. You're good there. Keep that job until, you know. And I remember the other adult in my, in my life telling me, a very close adult telling me that I was complaining that I've got debt and I need to find a way to, to, clean, to clean up my debt. It's like, oh, no, you're an adult. Welcome to adulthood. No. Be comfortable. <laughs> the, the problem was with be debt. comfortable yeah. with, debt. with the debt. No. You know, so it's how we're raised, but we must remember that we are taking on how our parents were raised. Yeah. And we're now not only needing to undo my own ways of being, their ways of being, as well. It's generational, and that's mm. why it's so important. It's the transformational stuff. Mm. We talk about it as if it's it's something that's not important. It's so it's important, important because these things are ingrained so deeply in how we live mm. and engage. Mm. And so, if my decision comes from the fact that I should not have been seen, I should not, you know, be be seen. What was it? Be seen, not heard. Be seen, not heard. Not be heard. seen, not heard. Mm. And then you grow up to be a wife. And even then, it is be, be seen, not heard, really, because yeah. it's about how the, the family is taken care of, how the husband looks, mm -hmm. you know, like the how well thinks, she cooks. Yeah. It's what seen. Think what everyone thinks Every, about yeah. you. Mm -hmm. It's never about what we yeah. think. So if I'm going to come to a boardroom where the boardroom people are expecting to hear my thoughts mm. and opinions about this thing that I'm saying I'm a subject matter expert in, mm. and you don't have in you the confidence because you haven't given it to Ayanda mm. and me to give you the checkbox to yeah. say, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It has to be intentional. I agree. Mm. Um, and we always talk about intentionality, right? And in it being intentional is, am I bringing the next woman into the room with me? Mm. Am I showing the next entrepreneur, female entrepreneur, I'm how it's done? the lift down. In the boardroom. Mm. Am I showing them that it's okay to speak your truth in the boardrooms and not to just accept mm. that it is the way it is. Mm. And it takes time. Um, I think we also must, we need to be kind to ourselves. Mm. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's a journey mm. and you know, we need support, we need each other's support, mm. we need each other's hand to walk down mm. this, um, this road. Because mm. um, entrepreneurship just generally is difficult mm. and we were talking about it earlier. Like, you must be crazy to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> Keza. Keza. <laughs> Do you not love your life? <laughs> Do you not love yourself? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. But it's so fulfilling, you know, when you change the lives that you change and mm. you see people getting jobs, you see entrepreneurs hiring other people and creating jobs there. Mm. And you're like, okay, I'm making a difference. Yeah. But at the time where you are, <laughs> you are there in the trenches and you are rolling up your sleeves and, you know, mm. that, that then becomes difficult. And that's where we need to support each other. Yes. Yeah. And you need to be there for each yeah. other as mm. women in business. That's so true. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was Just going go. to actually tell a story because uh, for me, I actually, when I reflect, I'm so grateful to have a business partner mm. because um, so many things that, you know, and many moments that we've shared together, at least give that balance mm. that at least I have someone to, to speak to, someone to cry with, you know. But, you know, other women are doing it by themselves alone. and they feel like they're alone, you know. And that's why it's important for more business women to come out and at least hold someone else's mm. hand, you know. I remember I must tell one story. 
<laughs> you know, uh, when we started with Mbone, mm. we had to pitch uh, for, it took about a year and a half, almost two years of uh, pitching to this client. Mm, we know this client. Yeah, we know this client. <laughs> <laughs> it took a very long time to get there. Oh, yeah. Right. There was, Excuse the there shade. Was, <laughs> there was this, this, this one time, you know, um, actually it was our first our first meeting, I think. You? Our first meeting was And hectic. at the time, you know, um, we were driving my car, which had a spare wheel. <laughs> I had to drive it 80 kilometers an hour. I could not exceed that. We were running late. <laughs> so, you know, like, it was dramatic. And it kept shaking. It, yeah. <laughs> it was dramatic getting there for one, right? And... When we're in the, 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 the meeting, I have this thing where my voice fails me. Yeah. You know, this is where we become vulnerable and mm. we speak about these things. My voice sometimes fails me in such instances and I starts to shake because I'm nervous and mm. all of that. But we still went ahead and we did yes. it, right? Yeah. And that's a moment of courage, mm. right? And yo, the questions, the grilling <laughs> that you got. <laughs> We got out of that meeting crying. Sure. Then. We were crying on our way back. It's going to be it's okay. Gonna be <laughs> <laughs> it's going to I be remember. Okay. Because we, like the one would start crying <laughs> and then start saying, but I mean, we tried to do this. <laughs> Maybe, you know, that question. And the other one would be like, no, but you know, <laughs> at least you answered it this way yeah. and we prepared. So, and then after a while, the other one starts Oh, maybe if we should. <laughs> it was hectic. Yeah. And I, I get oh, what you're man. saying in the sense that at least there's the two of us. Imagine mm. going through that trip back alone. Alone. You know, yeah. and not even having the person that, yes, it, it, it went horrible. But just that person to be like, but, you know, you, you, we gave it our best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. We did what we could do. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. You know, it's, it's moments like those when mm. I reflect on them. Mm. And I'm just like, you know, it's about time that we take on other women yeah right um if we can get to a point whereby every businesswoman who's making it out there mentor someone mm. right it doesn't have to take a lot mm. out of your time mm. it could be an hour a month that you, you know and the more we spread out this word let's 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 be vulnerable i, I like the word mm. so i'm gonna use it a lot <laughs> yes you know? please do let's be vulnerable with, mm. each other. with each other let's not be selfish with the information that we need it's not always that we have to give money mm. which is you know another Just your thing time that, you mm. know when you speak to uh, a young entrepreneur who's coming into this space fresh what is it that you need most of the time they'll think that they need money mm. you know but uh, more often than not, you actually need the mentorship, the mm. guidance, and all of that, and the money will come. True. You know, afterwards. It is so true. Just your time. Your time. Just your time is enough sometimes. Right? Mm. Yeah. Because it's things that you didn't even know you didn't know. I, I used to, firstly, did not like networking. <laughs> I don't know how I got into entrepreneurship. <laughs> because Do you like anything about entrepreneurship? To, to, hey? Do you like anything about entrepreneurship? The, the 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 fulfilling feeling. <laughs> that, I love that. I do. The fulfilling feeling. I do. I love it. Um, but talking, I was talking about how I thought I hated networking, mm -hmm. and I think it was mostly because, oh, firstly, I was just scared of talking to people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to say. Um, I didn't know how to sell him is easy. You know, I think it took me three years mm -hmm. to be comfortable, like. When I say comfortable, I mean com I knew what we were doing, but I was very aware. You know, you go to these leadership sessions, you talk to people, and like, no, you need to talk about the how, the elevator pitch, catch me in the moment. You know, you need to say the right words, and and that's the pressure because every time I'm sitting next to a person, I'm like, oh, sh what are the right words for you? Mm. You know, what are the right what? How do I? bring this so that it makes sense to you mm -hmm. and so i always thought i don't like networking it's a waste of time anyways why am i needing to talk to random people i don't know la 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 but <laughs> <laughs> but we went through it and i realized that like mentorship mm -hmm. you know it's these things that maybe we're not even articulating it well um mm -hmm. or the session we went, I don't know if you had me know, um, a lady, I just remembered, sorry. <laughs> There's a lady called Gilebukhile, mm. Olivia. She's passed on today. Oh. And I actually did want to take a moment to thank her because, you know, when Imizi's Evolution was looking to launch and wanted to be out there, she gave us space where she was going to launch something. Mm. 
um, for us to actually have that space and the opportunity. And these are the type of women that we meet on our journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get emotional, but, you know, it's, it's spirits like that, um, giving, nurturing. Because mm. she, she, she held, and she, I mean, yeah. Anyways, that lady, she said, your net worth, your network your is, is, your, is your net worth. Mm. And, and it starts making sense because to your point, if I'm struggling with something, it's easier for me to pick up the phone and call Ayanda and be like, Ayanda, please help me because I know you know. And you give me the links, you give me the references, you give me the advice. Mm -hmm. And I move on with my life. Instead of doing something wrong, six months later, you're like, oh, you should have asked me. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's this easy, you know. And, and it's so, these are the things we don't articulate well mm -hmm. to entrepreneurs. They come in, they're freaking out about what they need to do. And you're telling them, oh, network more. Mm. Like for the longest of time, I'm like, what am I networking <laughs> for? <laughs> what am I doing with these networks? I think maybe it's the word, Mbune. And I'm really trying to find a better word for it. Maybe it's, we, we think about building relationships. So when you think, if I'm going into that space, I'm going to make friends, I'm mm. going to build relationships, mm. I'm going to meet new people, I'm going to learn. Mm. And I'm going to go grow. In that, space. in that space it might be less daunting so if it is a mindset of growth and learning yes. then i'm going in yes. there to hear what other people have to share i've also got a lot to share mm. so i can also impart my knowledge mm. and allow someone else to grow from my experiences mm, yeah. so that networking word maybe should go away and mm. you say let's go grow in spaces mm. or let's go help each other like grow that. in it's spaces better. right mm. and and post that, you then start leveraging off the, mm. the growth and the spaces that you're in. And I think most entrepreneurs or most people that are going through the networking session don't realize that you need to walk in there with your authentic self. Yes. Mm. So that um, curated or that um, thought through speech that you want that to do, it never works. It never works. <laughs> it actually just makes you it, nervous. It makes, it makes yeah. you more nervous, well, right? Because you've rehearsed it, right? Right. Mm. Um, and I always feel like we need to go in there knowing, so what's my purpose? Mm. My purpose is to grow entrepreneurs, mm. to grow, to help people grow. Mm. And how do I do it? Mm. I do it by running Liema in whichever services mm. I provide, mm. or by being an angel investor in whichever services I provide. So walking in there, be, being very clear with, mm. on your purpose, for me has always helped mm. because I walk in there authentically, I will fumble through the elevator pitch. But when I'm having a conversation with the same person five minutes later, it's a different discussion. It's a different discussion altogether. Mm. And that's where the relationships start forming. Yes. Right? Mm. So I've, I've, I've had to take coaching mm. um, classes to speak in public. I could never do this. Five years ago, mm. never. I could never do, you know, but keynote But did, did someone tell you you needed to take uh, classes to be able to come, to be comfortable, yes. or did you, okay. Yes. I said I want to speak, and one of the ladies from, from We Connect, actually, mm -hmm. Jean, she said, maybe you need coaching. I was like, is there such a thing? Who coaches anyone to learn how to speak? To speak. <laughs> wow. And thus, I started taking coaching sessions. Wow. I take coaching sessions every month. Um, I could not, like, guys, when I say I could not speak, I mean I could not speak. Wow. I would sit here and mm. swallow Listen. my words and, no, and go, I, um, I, I and go, um, I, I can't oh, even imagine. Five years of coaching. Wow. wow. Five years of continuous it's coaching. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. And also sure. just being brave. Um, I, I, I had, to, I had to be brave because I was like, you're such a coward. Speak to the people. <laughs> And soft talk. <laughs> Speak to the people. Yes. <laughs> but eventually, yeah, you get there. Mm. And and the power of coaching, the power of other women in your network who say coaching is is required in order for you to mm. get to the next level. Um, I actually wanna dig as kids for cutting. No, I actually wanna dig mm. on um, one of the platforms mm. that you're part of, mm -hmm. WPO. Yes, Women you, Presidents yeah, Organization. If you can tell us a bit more about it, because I think you know, um, we definitely, uh, as Mbon with Mboni, mm. have spoken about it's time that we start forming mm. more and more organizations mm. like that. But mm. I don't want to speak or butcher 
organization. Yeah, it's such a, such an amazing organization. I don't think anyone could butcher it. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been a member for about seven years now. I think going on to eight, mm -hmm. and it's I don't I don't even know how to explain WPO. WPO for me, as I said earlier, it's a support group. Mm. Um, it's where I walk in there and I can just be in a safe space. We literally sign NDAs every time you go into the wow. room. Um, you can't say anything about what happens in the room. Wow. And that so you allows can, the vulnerability. That, exactly, yeah. and the safe space. Mm. So it's, it's where safe spaces are created and mm. you can come in and once a month um, we talk about what are your margins looking like, what are your, what's your mm. revenue, turnover, cash flow, and if anyone can help you with it, <laughs> even better. Wow. Um, talk about uh, your health. Mm. So we set goals at the beginning of the year, all mm. of us. And every month you come in, you, we ask how far are you with your goals. Yeah. So someone holds you accountable. Mm. It's a space where you're held accountable. It's a space where it's, it's a sisterhood. Mm. Um, I've made so many friends within WPO from different countries. Wow. So it's a global organization. We go on conference once a year to d they choose a country. I think next day is Colorado. Um, they said it was Vegas. I missed it. I'm so sad. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. So you have thousands of women from all over the world who belong to the sisterhood. Mm. And they meet and they share ideas. And they share resources. Mm. It is the most amazing, um, that is amazing. network of anyone could ever belong to mm. and it's just that support and the learnings and the growth that I've had within WPO and I think my business within the first two years of being part of WPO quadrupled in, in revenue that's what support does um, wow. when you have other women supporting other women that's what support it's a no-brainer it's a no-brainer your business will grow Oh my um, gosh! Yeah, so that's for me. That's what WPO is. It's a it's giving a network women. of systems. that's what that's what giving, giving women, women that's looks exactly like, it. and not just talk, right? Because mm -hmm. we do go to these conferences, and you unfortunately you still meet women who will who are in very in, in positions where they can they can afford opportunities to other women, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're still struggling. And whether mm -hmm. it's their own drama and, and, so and they don't thinking. know how to. Maybe they don't know how to. So it's it's so encouraging. Mm. to know that you know there are people who are like that who are still wanting to give and are still I, one of the sessions the the wits the one mm. i was talking about I earlier enjoyed. i enjoyed it oh my gosh the caliber of women yes. Lebo Hilo put together is you know oh my word mm. but all of them were saying empower and all of them were, mm. were talking about the power of women um one of them osma bule mentioned how a woman has power, but if they acknowledge and recognize it within themselves, and then they meet another woman who's like that, it's mm -hmm. like, that's dynamite. Yes. Mm. I, that's dynamite. Mm. I, guys, we're meant to be nurturers. Mm. The reason why some of the things are not happening so well for us is because we've taken the role of mm. what being in business looks like, which is very masculine, instead of actually getting into business as women. Mm -hmm. You know, and doing what we do best as women, as, as women, being nurturing and, and because, being giving, yes, and being in our generous. nature is givers, in mm. our nature is growers, mm. multipliers. They always joke about you give. <laughs> I don't know if I can say such things here. <coughs> you but may. Let me, move, space, let, space, me space. Move, let me move on to the next one. You give a woman a house and she gives you a home. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you were going to say. Safe space. Safe space, you know. Um, yes. Because we, you know, as women, it's innate in us. Mm -hmm. We've got the power to be able to just multiply yeah um and i find that evolution um is, is is such 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 an institution we we're saying that we need to give back and mm -hmm. we're using women to your point is we know the, the our purpose with evolution mm. eradicating poverty mm -hmm. being a speaker for women in business mm -hmm. you know like being loud and vocal about it changing policies that don't make sense in how we are operating mm -hmm. how are we doing this through those women, because they are the vessel that we can actually use to show the business case that no woman starts a business and it doesn't have an impact mm -hmm. yeah. in the community, so in the country, in the world. In the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That's so true. true, and I think the, the, the impact is undeniable, right? Mm -hmm. And I think through evolution, we've been doing a lot of research 
around this, you know, the funding that goes towards women-owned businesses. Mm. You know, the, the, the stats are, you know, appalling how mm. less money is going towards women. It's actually about 2% of money that's coming to Africa actually goes to women-owned businesses, right? It's 1% globally. But, but, yeah. But the impact that those businesses have mm. in the societies, you know, that they're in, Think about... And it's know, undeniable. It's data. It's undeniable. That's data, mm. right? But, I mean, even when we look around, Mbunen, when we when we look at the women that we've been exposed to even growing up, the mama who's selling vegetables mm. on the streets, how, 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 how is it that they are even able to not only take care of their immediate family, but they are the, the ones who actually take care of even mm. the... That, that, what, what do you call them? The, the beggars mm. on the streets. Mm. I've seen that happening all the time, you know. That's true. When we got into business, mm. we wanted to help, right? It, mm. it, it, yes, we, we want to make the money to be able to help, mm. but the why, we are helpers by nature. True. That has always been clear. And when I was listening to you explaining your purpose as well, you know, is your purpose starts with you, one, being intentional about helping women, mm. you know, what do you use? You use um, Liema Consulting mm. as a vehicle, as an enabler for That's you it. to do that. And, I mean, we, we, we speak to more and more women, and it's just mm. the same story mm. altogether. Um, I wanted to, 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 to speak about, you know, the, the business landscape, even in our world, and, and, and what we've been exposed to. You know, um, we, we get into business and we, we apply what we know or we apply what we've seen mm. men do, right, um, in boardrooms because we've observed. But there's actual power in us showing up as women mm. that we are and, you know, the different characteristics that we have mm. naturally as collaborators, right, as helpers. Mm. There's, there'll be more power and multiplier in effect if we get to do that more it's often, true. right? Um, in your experience, Ayanda, mm -hmm. you know, what are some of the things that you believe, um, you know, other young women who are getting into this entrepreneurship space, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that, you know, you've noticed have worked for you mm -hmm. that are not necessarily um, the norm of how business has been done? You know, um, example would be, you know, in the boardroom, showing up dressed, a certain way, not pink. Mm. you know, and you just pop in with your pink, <laughs> yes. you know, and, and, and heels. You, you get yeah. what I'm saying? But <laughs> it, it's not about really the colors that we've been, you know, programmed mm. that you're a professional if you wear black, navy, and blue. You mm. get what I'm saying? Mm. That's just an example. What are some of the things that you've noticed? Personally, um, 13 years. It's a long time <laughs> to run a business in an industry that for the longest time has been male dominated. Mm. When you think about some of the services we offer, which is a contractor management and payroll outsourcing, mm. it has been a male dominated space for a while because yes. of the cash flow issue. Mm. Um, yes. Yes. So how yeah. many how many women could I mean. afford to have to carry a corporate um, payroll book mm. or you know people? expenses. So because of that, um, I would walk into boardrooms and it would just be mainly men <laughs> in suits. And I thought, this is not who I am. I'm not a suit person. Mm. And for the first couple of years, I tried it. <laughs> the so suits, their suits, their heels, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I actually want to be more grounded. Mm. I want to be flat, I want to be in my sneakers, I want to be in my sandals. Mm. At some point, maybe I actually want to be walk barefooted in my office. Ooh. That's my favorite, walking, <laughs> walking around the office favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and not caring for the judgment, you know? So it, it, why? <laughs> it took a while. Um, but I think the more you understand who you are as a person, as a leader, you then start being your authentic self, even in the boardrooms, even in the office, even in leading mm. the people in your business. So I, I love having fun. My team knows this. And I think for a while I thought, whew, they're going to take advantage, so I must be hardcore. 
How boring, how exhausting. How boring, how no, exhausting. How <laughs> exhausting. Oh, my At gosh. some point, I thought, you know what? I will be my true fun self. Mm. I love laughing. I love playing. And at Liema, we play hard and we work hard. Yeah. Um, work ethic for us is very important. But today, for instance, they're knocking off at two, and mm. we had a Kahoot quiz this morning <laughs> about our African heritage mm. online because we're hybrid. Um, but you see, that's, that's the fun of it. And by two, we're done. The work is done, and we've delivered to the client. Mm. So in, in leading businesses or in managing businesses or running your businesses, I would say to upcoming entrepreneurs, just be your true self. Yeah. It's okay to be your true self and at some point to be aligned with people mm. that have the same values mm. as you, mm. that have the same vision possibly as you, mm. and even with your clients. Um, I always say we're so selective with our clients. Half the time we want to fire our clients. <laughs> <laughs> Half the time, like, please, you you are not aligned. <laughs> <laughs> you are not aligned because we don't partners, know what the, yes, right. Yes, day, so if you, as my partner, are also not, not working with, with me, with my it values, doesn't work. it doesn't work. Mm. So, but mm. it it takes some time to get to a point where you're saying, as your partner, I've got something to offer. So my value prop is very clear mm. and very strong. So I can actually be selective in who I partner with. Yes. Mm. Because then if our values are not aligned mm. and my value prop is, is very so strong, important. I then talent. I can clearly say no thanks. No thank mm. you. Thanks, but Understanding no that value proposition, right? And I mean, we say this now, I'm, 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 I think people will think we're saying this now because, because that we happen to have the, 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 the privilege the, too. Mm -hmm. But even if, you, if we're not cognizant of this I, I, I mean I don't think we even thought about it back then yeah. um, and these for me um, are things that are not you're not aware of them you don't even think about them because you get into entrepreneurship as a small business you are told that you need to get clients mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go panda for clients mm -hmm. you Hustle. never sit and then say what align your clients with your own values because you don't even think about what your values what your for values your companies are, are. True. except for the fact that I need to have a client mm. You know, how, how do we, is it coaching and mentoring is it these discussions mm. that start um, changing that, that, that because same as your first uh, employee, your first client mm. can make or break. Yes, yeah. that is so Even true. your spirit to, to the point that you're like, yes, maybe I'm not an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. But it's true. I mean, I, I, it's it's the it's the blind spot stuff, right? Mm. Um, that you don't know, you Not don't know. Not knowing what you don't know. Mm. I think it's 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 also about um, you know the women going to these events. I, now I'm cognizant mm. of not saying networking. The networking events, because I think for us as well, the more we went to these platforms, listened to more people mm. as well. That's when we started hearing about these things. Mm. Exposure is also very important. Mm. Um, you know, we were fortunate because we were in the consulting space. Mm. I think there was, there's a lot of things that we um, implemented because we've seen it, mm. how it, it should be done, right? Um, and mentorship and coaching is definitely um, also very important and key. I think we were like you as well before we got our business coach. We just felt like, what is this? You get a, a coach. <laughs> I tell you what, ask her. What, what she was like, yeah, oh, so no, we had to have the different time. What is this person going to be doing? <laughs> Mali, paying money We don't have money what? for that. You know, but there's so much value, right, mm. in these things because at the end of the day, it accelerates, mm. you know, your business quite drastically mm. and sets you apart, right, mm. um, from, from a lot of people who might take longer mm. to, to get to that point. And yeah, that's mm. key. That's right. Phew, the giving woman, the guys. Giving but woman. also, where does the giving woman then have a break? Mm. As a woman, we are givers. Mm. At home, you know, whether you've got kids, you're married, you're living with friends and family. You know what I mean? You, we are always giving because we're always expected to give. When do you... Take that break to be like, hey, it's, I need, you know, I, I feel like we need to start advocating for those things more. And the, the importance of rest, because 
I think you mentioned this word once now, I've forgotten it, these big English terms. It's a very simple, it's a, it's a biggish <laughs> word, but it's a very simple <laughs> terminology that we're getting to a place now where people, just as employees as well, are present. It's presentism. Presentism. <laughs> it means that you are, you are yeah, present, present at the office, mm. but you are not, You're not present. present yeah. You're not doing yes, work. Yes. You know, your paper shufflers, my, my old boss used to call mm. them Showing the face. paper shufflers. Mm. You know, you do just enough not to get fired, mm. but that's it. Mm. You know, like your performance review, it's, it's just, just that's good. Like quiet, quit, quiet quitting. Not even. It's different. Not even. So, quiet quitting, you're, you, you, you don't do... Mm. That much, you don't put yourself in, mm. you're just there though. You're just yeah. there. So I, th I think we were talking about life balance, work life balance, mm. when, when I, I mentioned that mm. and I was saying, there's, I don't believe there's such a thing as work life balance. Mm. Actually, there's no such thing as balance in life. Mm. It's, it's al there's always going to be an imbalance. Mm. But in the work that you do, as and when you're doing it, are you present? Mm. Mm. In the time that you spend with your children, for instance, mm. if you put aside, so I've got my son's time in my calendar from five to six, I think, Guzola. Mm. Our boys from six to seven. Mm. So I've got Guzola from five to six, but mm. from five to six, I switch off everything mm. and I make sure that I'm present with him. Mm. I might miss his soccer match at 2 p.m. today, but at that time where I've set aside you. time for him, I am present. It's just us. Mm. Mm. Same with Uabo on a video call and it's just us. Mm. So even in how do we then give back to ourselves, mm. maybe we must put it in our calendars mm. that from 6 to 8 a.m. It's just me. It's just me. And whatever that And whatever is, I want to do, day. be it listening to a mm. podcast, listening mm. to music, acting the fool, dancing Jay. in front of a mirror. And those Just are the things that time. come with vulnerability. Mm. Knowing that you can actually not take yourself so seriously. Mm. Enough you. to actually dance in front of the mirror <laughs> and it's your release. And it's we take yeah. ourselves so seriously. We do. We do. Yeah. And you need to enjoy everything you that you're do. doing ideally. It's not always fun, but you really I need to find I want to challenge time. the balance. Mm. I think in the way that you've actually said it, for me, is the balance. Mm -hmm. You know, in, 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 in how we are doing our... Um, um, management check-ins now. Mm -hmm. We're moving away from tasks to saying, what's your focus? Mm -hmm. what, what are you, what do you intend this day to be like? What, okay. When this day ends, what is it that you want to be like, yeah, I that achieved. one I wanted to do and I've achieved it and mm -hmm. I've done it well because everything else is tasks mm -hmm. of whatever came from whenever, mm -hmm. right? And I find that the more you start doing that, then my intention is focused when I'm doing that task mm. and my presence is there, right? Okay. And in the same day, I can still go home and have the hour yes. with my daughter, with my son, and I'm there, I'm present. And it's been a balanced day. Mm -hmm. Whether I got home at eight, okay. and I spent the, the whole day at the office, and I got home at eight and I caught mm. that hour. That day has been balanced because my focus for that day was make sure that this client report is done, mm. make sure I chill with my children, mm -hmm. make sure we make pizzas. Mm. And, and I think if we take it from like moment to moment, like you had said, mm. day to day, then we start seeing the balance a bit more. Because mm. even for yourself, you then realize this week, I haven't danced in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone and done my nails. <laughs> yes. I haven't watched, listened to a podcast. It doesn't matter what it is. But it, is. but it then becomes a way that, oh, no wonder... You start knowing thyself, know thyself. Know thyself. Mm. You know, mm. I'm not, I'm not balanced. I'm not okay. Mm. I'm grouchy. And then when you think back in your week, you're like, oh, I haven't had time for I myself. Haven't had time for mm. myself. You know. True. And I think True. getting to that balanced state for me personally has taken, you know, quite a lot, a lot of mistakes, <laughs> you know, um, and a lot of self-sacrifice, which mm. is something that. Um, I think as women, we do a lot. Mm. We prioritize everybody else before ourselves, you know. And for some reason, we're not comfortable saying no. You know, it takes a lot to get to a space whereby you say, I've committed this time to myself because it's not like you, you won't get requests between that 6 to 8 a.m. Yeah. timeline, right? Mm. But having the ability to actually put off your phone, mm. you can see that call is coming through. And not ignore. And ignore. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it's me time, but it mm. takes a lot 
to get to that space mm. whereby you find the the the, the balance mm. you know of of of, of prioritizing whatever is important mm. to you at the time because that's different also mm. for everybody and you know i still find myself um sometimes you know battling at the beginning of the year i battled a lot with my health mm -hmm. right because i was prioritizing again other things over and above you know um the fact that i need i've made a commitment to myself to be more healthy you know to put myself first to relax and mm. all of that but it takes the intention. You need to be intentional about saying no and putting that time. I like the, the, the schedule it in your calendar. Schedule it in your calendar. calendar. I already no, have my must. November it's schedule. I'm, I'm ready. Yes, must be nice. I'm tired now. I've got a trip. To and schedule for, for November. And you know, to look for me, to. it's these small things. And it sounds like small things, mm. right? But that's how women are doing business differently. Mm. Because... I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, picking on the male okay. males. You guys are doing amazing. You know, they, they gave us a, a landscape to you, so I'm not picking on you. But generally, I'm again paint brushing, obviously. But generally, men only focused on business. So when a man said, "I'm gonna be an entrepreneur," that's it. Take it. Five to okay. seven, mm. you, like twenty-four hours. Focus, your killer. You know, at some point, if they feel like they're ready, they're gonna get a wife get the children but they know that's taken care of family life is taken care mm. of i mean i've generally met so many men who are like oh eh, you know i'm doing well i've got stuff but i'm looking for women eh, who, who knows what they want in life because uh, i'm a busy man <laughs> eh, and i don't want in a way they don't want the slave queens i'm mm. like but then what do you want from me mm. because you are saying you're busy mm. what are we doing mm. <laughs> you know what i mean mm. and i think the fact that as women we are still able to run a business mm. take care go of home us. and take care of the family and think about taking care of the family mm -hmm. you know and think about mentoring the next person and think about the, the the differences we're making on our daily lives just that alone i feel like is is it's us doing business differently mm -hmm. and yeah, we, sure. don't, we don't we don't we don't celebrate ourselves enough for we these should. things mm. and we should right and we should and i was about to say to you lee um speaking to that when i'm putting is so i i do a lot of therapy mm. for myself mm. so mm. i've got a constant therapy session that's also <laughs> saying <laughs> <different. laughs> it's that every month i'm going um, for therapy mm -hmm. because yeah. again we need help and we need support because mm. we do so much we do so and much. we give so much and my therapist was saying to me, what is going to happen to all these people if you do just, if you drop mm -hmm. and you collapse? Mm -hmm. So how about maybe being intentional about filling your cup first mm -hmm. and you being okay first mm -hmm. and then continue giving to the mm -hmm. world? And another thing she asked me, she said, what if you are the hindrance to someone else's growth because you are constantly you are there doing trying to help everything mm. for them how about you give them the tools and then to move away people? and move away and move on to the next and give the tools mm. and leave the tools and move away because you're not doing them any services any i service. mean we talk about the fact that it's better to to teach a man to fish yes than than continuously giving them the fish mm. yeah. but and and that there is a there's a beautiful balance <laughs> so the walking the line, I, I, I struggle with that still. It's something that I need to be so aware of was when do I, when do I tip, you know, because at some point you, you, you're bringing the person along with you either way, whether you're going to teach them or you're going to give them mm -hmm. the, the fish, right? And I'll use this as a silly example, my kids. Because we forget that they also need... <laughs> they need... And because we'll be at work for long, mm. we'll get home, and then we want to to do more, mm. you know, to to justify our absence, mm -hmm. right? So for me, it's it's that line of saying, Oguti, I'm hindering your, your progress because I keep doing for you, for you. Mm. a lot more than I should, mm. you know? How do we, how do you, how, is there a comfort button for you where you're like, I, now you're crossing a line where... I'm doing way more. Even you can bring it to employees. Where, mm. How would that look like? When you're feeling like, I've been though, um, 
teaching mm. or I feel like I've, I've been carrying you and you're not willing to mm. learn. Mm. It's different for different people, different mm. humans, different... Oof, it's, it's, really, it's really different. <laughs> but you know, mm. and, and I think one of the things I've, I've learned to trust in, in business in my life is my gut. Mm. So when my gut says, hmm, enough is enough. Mm. And I've learned also now to make quicker decisions in following my gut when it says, you have done enough, mm. you have been teaching enough, it is now time to, to let, let them swim mm. on their own. But it's difficult, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough because we are nurturers. We yeah. want, we want yes. to, to protect, mm. we want... Mm. So the boundaries also are very important for us. And it's an everyday struggle, the having those boundaries and saying, enough. Here, yeah. it... The extreme <laughs> is also uh, not good because it also creates dependency. Mm. Mm. True. And I mean, that's something that I would advise every entrepreneur to have in mind from the get-go. Mm. You must have the mindset of building the business that should survive without you. Is that true? Right, because the, the more you want to be everything, mm. right, you, you can become the blocker. True. Right, because you, 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 you actually have a lot of skills. The minute, the minute you employ someone else, that person is coming with their own skills, you know, they've got a lot to offer to the business. But if you don't give them the opportunity to actually showcase, um, you know, their, their skills and contribute to the business, it's better to test someone, mm -hmm. right, and give them that leeway to show you, you know, mm -hmm also how far they can go mm. to your point you know it, it differs from person to person mm. and i do believe that the more you test people obviously in moderation mm. you know according to their capabilities and skills uh, but don't be a blocker mm. and want to do everything, everything yourself true. exactly mm. Guys, uh, i want to i want to be, before I, I i think we're gonna be out of time soon mm. but i want to speak about angel um investment investment because that's something that um, you know we we absolutely absolutely love to to see that there's actually people out there who uh, want to support other entrepreneurs, mm. you know, and see their businesses grow from strength to strength, mm. and they put together their own money because there's the venture the, there's the venture capital space, which is the space that Inzizi Evolution is in, okay. and then there's the angel investment space, <laughs> right, <laughs> which is you know human beings with their own funds and their own money, angels, you know, angels mm. that are investing into this business, and that's something that you do, mm -hmm. that's something that you're passionate about, love and, it, you know, <laughs> right. Your own money. <laughs> we'll get there. Tomorrow. No, we will. Well. We'll get there. It's very but, yeah, inspiring. It's so beautiful to yeah. see. Mm. And so inspiring, you know, mm. on so many levels that for me, I've always thought of angel investors as these Americans okay. who come into <laughs> Africa, right? And because they've got dollars, <laughs> you know. So when I meet an actual angel investor who mm. looks like me, mm. that's powerful, mm. right? Mm. So tell us a bit more about what you guys do. I was actually saying to <laughs> Tom Bonnen the other day when, when I was on the panel mm. that mm. angel investment for me is like stock fell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so no brainer, that. guys. It's not easy. It's a stock fell. Yeah. You come in, you create a stock fell with nine, well, we've got 19 other women besides me, 19 other women that bring um, diverse skills and we've got legal experts, we've got finance experts, we've got business experts, marketing. So it was very intentional in the way that Desert Angels was formed mm. or was incorporated. It was how do we get into a room as women and intentionally empower other women in the tech space, mm. especially the startups. And whoever's coming into the room to invest in these other women has to be willing to give their time. Mm. So if we decide to invest in a certain, we call them zebras, because not unicorns. unicorns. No, please, <laughs> let's not talk about unicorns. <laughs> let's talk about zebras. Yeah. So as we invest in our zebras, we're not only investing money in our zebras, and our zebras shouldn't only expect us to invest money in them, mm. but also investing our time and expertise. Mm. So me being in the human capital space, or in the people space, I have to be willing to give my time mm. to them. If they're struggling with putting together contracts, 
policies mm. or even recruiting. Mm. Um, so I have to be willing, okay. besides the money from my pocket. Yeah. So mm. I actually feel that was, that was giving more value to the zebras than mm. the money we, we gave them. Mm. Um, going back to the Stockfell part, we all come together. And it took us a bit of time, I think a couple of months, to eventually get to the amount of money we, we needed to raise, mm. you know, to start investing with the entrepreneurs. And it was month by month we would put money in. And I think it was oh, a year later. It took us a while. Um, a year is not long. A year, yes. a year yeah. later, well, with 20 women, mm, mm. we will do better next time. We're going to do a, um, our next round is going to be better. <laughs> but a year later, um, Dazzle Angels was um, created and we've invested in about, I think, four startups, four or five startups, I'm not sure. And we all just go in there and we help them grow their businesses. But it's so fulfilling. And, and, and I think using your own money to create such impact, it's also you sleep at night and you're like, Phew, wow, I've, I've done, done well. something. <laughs> <laughs> I've achieved. I've, I've done well, I've done well. But there's also different forms of investing in entrepreneurs. And, and I think we talk about angel investing and people think they have to have so much money mm. and actually don't. If there's 20 of you, you keep on putting that money into that mm. kitty. The kitty grows. You bring in your expertise. And so you start with the kitty even before you get the business. Yes. Mm. So you just sits and starts we with start the kitty. You start just putting in the money. And then when you do get the businesses, when you do then get the businesses, you know then how we, much you have exactly, to work with. Okay. Exactly, to work with. So... We then had, we had different committees. So we okay. had the sourcing committee, the DD committee, the investment committee, and all these experts are sitting in the different rooms. Of course, I'm sourcing because, mm, yeah, well, yeah. I'm a recruiter, <laughs> of course. So we sat in the sourcing committee, and eventually when we invested in them, we then took them by the hand, and two or three of us mm. would have meetings with them monthly have check-ins, get reports from them and see where you're struggling, mm. where do you need help? Because mm. a lot of the times they don't realize they need help with business development maybe, mm. connecting. Um, so it was easy enough for, for us to open up our networks to them. So not only our time, but our networks and obviously the money. Mm. Um, and we overcomplicate investment, guys. Yeah. Investment is an hour of your time once a month. Mm. Investment mm. is... Sorry, for instance, um, if you have a corporate mm. as a client, the grant funding that they give you mm. and that they your SD budget. Mm. So how about we then open up those grant fundings for our entrepreneurs? Mm. So that's, that's the thinking around how we support entrepreneurs and especially one of the other companies that I'm a director in, which is Afrofuture Tech. So in that company, we bring entrepreneurs into the room twice a year we help them scale to the next level by giving them tools to scale. Mm. So from how do you improve your tech? How do you bring in an expert to look at your finances mm. or into your branding and marketing? And we then give them access to market. Wow. So we open up the doors for them to go into our corporates. The corporates, we already have net, yeah. Net, uh, yeah. We already have relationships with. Yes. So we give them those, that access to markets, and mm. eventually when they're ready, we give them access to investment. Mm. So I bring in my friends from the investment space, and mm. I'm like, yes, and amazing entrepreneurs oh, wow. that are ready for you. That's and amazing. The, yeah, and that's what and we I do mean, at Future Tech. Right. We actually do make investments seem like it's such okay, a it's complicated... Not, because we think about the funding bit yes. and the complexities that come with that, but mm. really it's not. It's not. It's really not. There's so many things that mm. can be done when it comes to investment. Mm. Or even just bringing in, we were talking about it the other day, um, almost like a, um, a pool of resources. So a shared, what do you call it? A shared, shared resources, resources. Mm. shared economy. Shared like an ecosystem. ecosystem. Shared ecosystem. Mm, yeah. Imagine if my marketing person is doing marketing for your business mm. and your business, mm. and you're growing that business, oh, but, but they're cheaper because butter now systems as well. Now there's more people. Now paying. there's more people paying, so oh, they charge wow. you less, and we now have access to an expert. Mm. We butter. I give you marketing. You give me a free. And you remember I mentioned and, the buttering system, and people were like, "Oh no, who would want to butter?" Because I was like, guys. Before there was money, there was buttering. Yes. Mm. You know, you could do my legal documents mm. and, you, you know, and I can do accounting works. Mm. You know what I mean? That's it. Why aren't we thinking like that as entrepreneurs? Because I had, a, I had a, a TED talk with this guy, Jeff Miller, mm. 
Clink is the CEO of Grovest, also a VC. And um, so one of the things, the questions I posed was like, you know, it's so difficult for women in business to, to, to get access to these things, la, 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 la. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, and I mentioned some of the uh, um, economical and government constraints in South Africa. He's like, that's an excuse, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like so defa very defensive. I'm like, excuse me. He's like, you're an entrepreneur because the point is that when you see a problem and a challenge and an issue, you find an opportunity yeah. and fix it. Mm. So you telling me about yes, <coughs> shedding is a problem. Yes, government whatever is a problem. But these are things that are not going to go away mm. anytime soon. Mm. True. What is the solution? Mm -hmm. I don't discuss those things. Those are excuses for an entrepreneur. Yes. That, mm. That's an excuse, ma'am. Mm. And so I. It, it really, I, I'm finding that more than anything, just being a woman in business and being an entrepreneur has a lot to do with pivoting. <laughs> no, constantly. Yeah. That, that pivoting constantly. is traumatic. I Bonin, can you find that? That's why I, I said it out in Bonanga. I was like, because <laughs> now I was... Change gear, maybe. Change direction. <laughs> but maybe self-awareness as well. And, mm. and the intention and the purpose of why you even started yeah. being in business. Yes. yes. Yeah. That is so true. Ladies, it's been a wonderful conversation. It's but ending. It's fine now. <laughs> I know, right? We can talk for the next hour again. Yeah. But um, I've, I've, I've gotten so many beautiful nuggets mm -hmm. out of this conversation. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. I mean, even in terms of investment, just to close up the, the, the topic that we we're talking about yeah. um, and how you simplify it, you mm -hmm. know, and I think it, it's a challenge for us as women in business as well, to just look at investment as a stock fail. Mm. I think we all understand the concept of, yeah. of stock fail, mm. invest in someone else. Mm. The other powerful thing that you mentioned was um, time, right? Your time, an hour of your time mm. would be so invaluable to the next, to the next person, mm. you know, because even for us, um, we've grown tremendously just by engaging with other uh, women and getting those nuggets from them and being intentional to then change and apply mm. what you've learned. Mm. Thank you so, so much to the both of you, Mboneng. I think our audience has been missing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's, 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 it's been great mm. and wonderful having you uh, with us as well. Any last words? I'm going to give each of you a minute. Yo. Um, <laughs> sum, up. sum up, sum up, sum up. So I think... I'm realizing more, the more I attend these sessions, um, whether it's seminars or, for, or, or, or whatever platforms that we go to, is that these discussions are important, mm -hmm. right? Um, some other lady, I think we had gone to Women in Africa conference actually, she was like, yeah, they always talk about how women are talkative mm -hmm. and we've got loud voices. It's like, let's use yeah. our loud voices mm -hmm. to make yeah. the changes that need mm -hmm. to be made. And so I do challenge a lot of the... Um, businesses, women in business, uh, even women in corporates, you know, executives, you know a lot more about how to deal with the um, intricacies of boardrooms and, mm. and, and development and policies and whatever. Let's, let's, let's continue, you know, holding each other and growing each other. Mm. Take the lift downstairs, guys, mm. you know, press one down, um, lift as you rise. Mm. I agree. You've said it all. What do I say now? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> the giving entrepreneur. Ah, the giving entrepreneur. Um, I don't know. I love entrepreneurship so much. I could I could say so much about mm. entrepreneurs. And the giving entrepreneur. You're gonna have to edit this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's here for. I always say, you know, I always say, we're so scared of failure. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm talking to that entrepreneur who hasn't started their journey um, because he's scared. You are going to fail, but the trick is to fail forward. And mm. I always say this, fail forward. And you just get stronger by failing. Mm. I don't know, I've, I've lost count of all my failures in my business and in other businesses. But I just keep going because I also have support from other women. Um, that are my collaborators <laughs> and my competitors, <laughs> all in one, and sisters in business. Mm. And it, it's, it's important that we continue with the entrepreneurial journey. 
because I always I feel the solution to the world problems, Africa problems, our local problems is entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Without entrepreneurship, we're not going to alleviate poverty. Yeah. Without entrepreneurship, we're not going to alleviate crime, mm. which for me, it's a direct result of poverty. Without direct, crea direct without mm. creating My employment. Deck, it's there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> without creating employment mm. and, and making sure that we keep people in jobs and the mm. core businesses that we run, Liama Consulting and Imizizi, we we back there to poverty and and crime mm. so we are what the world needs yes in order to solve the problems so please we need more entrepreneurs um we need to be more supportive towards other entrepreneurs as more seasoned entrepreneurs mm. So, like amen to that. Amen <laughs> to that. So. Ladies, thank you so, so much. Um, and to our audience as well, thank you so much for joining us. Until we meet again uh, at our next Imizizi conversation in October. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.